This module is designed to help you identify key components of single limb and dual limb ventilator circuit setups, as well as identify potential locations for the placement of bacterial viral filters and humidification devices in different ventilator circuit setups. A ventilator circuit is the tubing that connects a patient to a mechanical ventilator. There are many different types of ventilator circuit and not all can be used interchangeably. The two basic categories for vent circuit types are dual limb and single limb circuits, but there are multiple configurations of each. In this module, we'll focus on a standard dual limb circuit setup and a standard single limb circuit with active exhalation valve using internal PEEP. First, let's start with the dual limb circuit using a heated wire active heat and humidification system. Here we have what might be considered a traditional ICU ventilator with a dual limb circuit setup. Here we have the expiratory limb takeoff and the inspiratory limb takeoff passing first through a bacterial viral filter. This leads into a short corrugated tubing which leads into our active heat and humidification system and the humidification chamber. This chamber is connected by IV tubing into a bag of sterile or distilled water. Continuing with the inspiratory limb here, often there's a heated wire inside the inspiratory limb to keep it warm. This is controlled by this external cable which goes from the heated humidification system to the proximal port here on the inspiratory limb. This helps to control the temperature of the heated wire. Continuing with the inspiratory limb, next we reach the Y and a bacterial viral filter, which is worth pausing on. There are multiple potential locations to place a bacterial viral filter in the circuit. A two filter setup is commonly recommended. Here you can see two green bacterial viral filters, one at the inspiratory takeoff from the ventilator and the second at the expiratory limb as it enters the device. The inspiratory filter helps protect a non-infected patient from a possibly contaminated ventilator, while the expiratory filter helps protect the device, the room environment, and healthcare staff from contamination by aerosolized particles. Now there are some alternatives that are worth considering. For example, in a dual limb circuit setup without the active heat and humidification system, here a heat moisture exchanger shown in blue is placed at the patient Y. Known as an HME, these do not necessarily have bacterial viral filtering capabilities and must always be used with a bacterial viral filter in line on the inspiratory limb. Now, as shown in this diagram, that inspiratory filter may be placed next to the HME. When placed next to the HME at the patient Y, this can contribute to significant dead space. But having a bacterial viral filter placed proximal to the patient can be helpful in the event of needing to emergently disconnect the circuit which is generally to be avoided. An additional option to be considered if placing a filter at the patient Y is the use of a combined heat moisture exchanger and bacterial viral filter. These devices are commonly referred to as an HMEF. In the ventilator circuit shown here, we have a bacterial viral filter at both the Y and at the takeoff of the inspiratory limb. Both of these are not necessary and choosing one in addition to an expiratory limb filter should be sufficient. As a quick note, anything distal to the patient Y in this setup, whether it's a bacterial viral filter or an HME, is considered to add to the dead space. Also shown in this circuit is an inline suction catheter, which is recommended to try and prevent breaks in the circuit for patient care. Now as we trace from the patient exhalation back through the expiratory limb, back through our circuit setup to the ventilator, You'll see that before entering the device, we go through a bacterial viral filter, again, to prevent potential contamination to the machine, or in the event that there's not a scavenger, uh, contamination to the room. You'll also notice at the distal end of the expiratory limb, a cable. This feeds data on temperature from the expiratory limb back to the heated humidification system and allows for temperature regulation of the inspiratory limb. Now we'll shift gears and talk about single limb circuit setups. We've chosen a commonly encountered single limb circuit setup that's found on many transport ventilators. This single limb circuit setup uses an active exhalation valve that's controlled by the machine and is also intended to be used on devices with internal PEEP. Here's an example of one such device. This compressor driven transport ventilator uses the single limb circuit setup. Here's the inspiratory limb takeoff and although not shown, this is the location where a bacterial viral filter could be placed on the inspiratory limb in a two filter setup. You'll notice the circuit has two additional tubes, one to control the pressure in the active exhalation valve, the other to transduce pressures from the circuit. This is important because without an expiratory limb returning to the ventilator, this is the only way that the vent can control PEEP 
exhalation, and get data back from the ventilator circuit. Next, we'll trace the inspiratory limb to the patient. We'll pass by this proximal transducer port, and then past our bacterial viral filter and HME, which you can see in this diagram. As was the case with the dual limb circuit setup, there are multiple options for the location of filters in a single limb circuit as well. As previously mentioned, the bacterial viral filter could go on the inspiratory limb takeoff from the ventilator. Finally, a combined bacterial viral filter with heat moisture exchanger capabilities can be used, also known as an HMEF. This would be placed at the patient Y. In our setup here, we're using an HME and bacterial viral filter and also have an inline suction catheter. All this can re represent significant dead space in the circuit. When the patient exhales, the tidal volume will travel to the exhalation valve. There are many variations of what this exhalation valve setup can look like. Here you can see the takeoff of the exhalation valve driveline, which allows the vent to control the exhalation valve. Although in this setup, we do not have the bacterial viral filter installed, this is an important part of the setup. And there are several potential locations before or after the expiratory valve where the bacterial viral filter can and should be placed in order for, to prevent contamination of the room with aerosolized particles. Please refer to the manufacturer's recommendations on the optimal location of the bacterial viral filter in order to avoid interference with the function of the exhalation valve. Before we conclude, a quick note on the placement of in tidal CO2 monitoring. When using side stream sampling in tidal CO2 monitoring devices, the sampling line should be placed behind the inspiratory limb bacterial viral filter. In other words, do not sample unfiltered air from the patient. Depending on the device, this can represent a significant risk to healthcare workers and should be avoided. Sampling of an exhaled breath for the purposes of in tidal CO2 monitoring could take place directly off of a bacterial viral filter with such a port available. Alternatively, this could come off of a combined HME and bacterial viral filter, also known as an HMEF. Lastly, if such a filter is not available and a spacer is used, that spacer should be placed between the bacterial viral filter and the ventilator. If mainstream capnography is being used, as shown in the far right diagram, the placement of the spacer is not as important from an infection prevention control standpoint. However, Placement behind the HME may be desired in order to prevent condensation buildup in the optical window. As previously noted, each of these setups can pose a significant amount of dead space into the circuit and must be considered, especially when using in pediatric patients.